What's up? Welcome back. Mind pump time. Here's the giveaway for today. Maps Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilder style workout program, and one of you will get free access to it. But you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm, okay? That's the truth. That's what we want. We want to rank higher because we're the best, but you know this already. Anyway, leave a comment, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and we'll get free access to Maps Aesthetic. One more thing before we get started with the show. Uh, we're running a promotion right now. Maps Strong, this is a strongman-inspired workout program, and Maps Powerlift, this is a powerlifting workout program, are both combined in a power bundle. Now, normally, if you get both, they retail at 300 bucks, but with this bundle, Maps Strong and Maps Powerlift together, $79.99. Again, it's $79.99, full access to both of those incredible programs. If you're interested, head over to mapsmarch.com. All right, here comes the show. If you do cardio in your resistance training workouts and your goal is to build muscle, strength, and speed up your metabolism, do cardio at the end of the workout, not at the beginning. Why is that? You know, this happens to be a, a quite a common question, right? People are like, okay, I do, I, I lift weights and I do cardio, same workout, mm -hmm. right? Should I do cardio before or should I do cardio after? Well, studies uh, show that the what you do at the beginning of the workout is the adaptation that you're going to get more of uh, than the second half or the what you do at the end of the workout. In other words, if you do cardio in the beginning, you're going to get more of the endurance cardiovascular effects. If you do the strength training at the beginning, then you'll get more of the strength and muscle building effects. So if your goal is strength, muscle, metabolism boosting, save the cardio for the end. If your goal is stamina, endurance, you know, you're going to be an endurance athlete or whatever, yeah. Then do cardio in the this beginning. This question does come up a lot. I think there's a misconception around that too. Like some people think that um, doing cardio in the beginning is good because it gets the blood flowing, it warms yeah. you up, warms up the muscles, gets it kind of prepared for you know the weight training set. But yeah, you're really prioritizing uh, which one the body should concentrate on more. That's yeah. not where I think it's confusing, and I don't think that's why it's talked a lot about. I think it's talked a lot more about for the burn fat community. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what, the that's the that's this is where this gets a little. Um, confusing because if we are measuring by just the single workout, doing cardio first, then lifting weights would potentially promote more fat burn in that in that workout. Yeah, based so on what though? That just measuring that 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 single workout based on that you getting them into a place of a you know de de burning off all their glycogen stores to then be utilizing fat as the primary source of fuel because you did cardio first. So now will you have let's so let's just say Now 20, this is not based on any studies, right? This is just what they're saying. No, there's there's plenty of studies to support that. There's plenty of studies to support that if you were to do 20 minutes of cardio before you go into weight training, your body's then going to use fat as a source of fuel to propel you through your lifting routine. Oh, this is a great uh I, I, this is a great myth to 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 hammer because when people look at fat oxidation versus gly glycolysis or burning glycogen, they mistaken that for fat loss. This is where, this is what I'm saying. This is yeah. where there's a lot of confusion here because mm -hmm. there's been plenty of studies to try and support that that's what's happening in this situation. And so you get people that want to burn more body fat. They're looking at it per that one hour. We're not talking about the whole entire day, which is just kind of like the, it's just like the fasted cardio yeah. myth. Yep. It's very similar to yeah. that. That when all things are created equal in the entire day, before or after is not making a big difference. But in that one hour window, it looks like we are burning, we're using more fat as fuel during that workout versus using glycogen. Yeah, yeah which, this is this hmm. goes right along with the the false, uh, I guess the the myths around exercise in general, where you know the especially the mainstream, I guess average person has been taught to value exercise primarily for its calorie burn because that's the way they look at things. Like, oh, calorie burn is what's most important. But it's not. It's it's the adaptation that's most important because that will get your body to change one way or another. It's not the calorie burn. The calorie burn is not nearly as important as what adaptation you're after, which is why I started and said, if you want strength and muscle and faster metabolism, right? Now, uh, if you're using fat for fuel, which by the way, if you're in ketosis – you're using fat for fuel. But you can also be in ketosis and be in a calorie surplus, which means you'll burn no body fat. Right. You'll still be overweight, right? So that's not what's important. What's important at the end of the day is are you burning body fat more than you're storing? So that's, that's what causes you to get right. leaner. And then what about the adaptations? Building muscle and strength is moves your metabolism in more of a faster direction. It speeds up the metabolism. 
you're more likely to keep muscle or build muscle. You're more likely to burn body fat in the long term. If you're trained for endurance and stamina, then we all know that your body tends to want to pare muscle down to make you more efficient. So whether or not you're burning fat for fuel or carbohydrates for fuel, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's about calorie deficit. We need to look at uh, ad adaptation. That's the idea. Not only that, but I would even make the case too that the, the client, because to me, it's only confusing for the clients that care about losing body fat. Sure. Mm. This isn't very confusing for somebody who wants to build muscle, somebody who's looking for general health. It's also not very confusing for somebody who is trying to run for a marathon. They want to get good at that. That's kind of obvious where you're going to spend most of your time. Where it gets where it gets confusing because of a lot of stuff that's supported out there for them burning more body fat in that one hour period. It's the same community that that's hung up on the fasted cardio. Mm -hmm. So if it's a burn fat person, that's who, who's getting, that thinks that, okay, maybe be better. But here's where... I would challenge it even further is that, okay, if we did that, if we did cardio before we went into weight training, even if we did, let's just hypothetically say that we did burn a little bit more body fat that way, still wouldn't matter because then the the effort that you put there would counter the the benefits of building muscle that you're gonna that are gonna be hindered now because you're gassed. Because I'm gassed out from doing cardio, now I'm not gonna get the best weight training routine, which in turn builds the most amount of muscle for myself. So the little bit of benefit you get up front maybe for utilizing fat, you lose out on the the muscle building side, which in turn is gonna speed up your metabolism and help you build burn fat automatically. Yeah, I would make, again, and I would make the argument, if you're just doing the cardio for the calorie burn, I mean, okay, you're okay then without glycogen. You can walk mm -hmm. on the treadmill or just cruise along and make that happen. Where you need the intensity and the effort is in your strength training. Right. Um, and you want glycogen for that, right? We've all tried to lift weights in low calories or ketosis and low calories. It's hard. You don't get a good pump. You're tired. You're not going to send as loud of a muscle building signal. So yeah, I, I 100%. And that goes back to the adaptation, right? If I'm training for like cardio stamina and performance, I'm also going to want to train in a way where I can maximize that, not just kind of gruel it out. you know. That, and that's why the only client I see value in doing cardio first is someone sp with specific endurance goals. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, burn fat, muscle, overall health, I'm going to tell them to lift weights first and then do cardio afterwards. Yeah, I'm with the you. only person that I'm going to tell, okay, we should do cardio before your weight training is if they have a very specific endurance goal, training for a marathon or getting ready for maybe Spartan. That's their primary goal. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. their primary goal is to get good at running. Then yeah, let's let's put all of our Those efforts. Those are the people do. that I would train. I would train triathletes and uh, people who did, like I had a, a couple clients that did Ironman and that's what we do. The yeah. strength training was... In the off season, we were trying to build a little strength. And then in season, I was just like, we're just trying to keep you from getting hurt. And if their schedule didn't permit them to separate the days, which often didn't, right? If you're training for an Ironman, you're doing some kind of endurance type of activity almost on a daily basis. So then they'd come see me once a week and they're like, should I do my run or my cycle after or before? I'm like, do it before. Mm -hmm. After, then you come see. And I would always want to try and separate it. So if you really want to split hairs, I would say, go do your run or go do your cycle or your swim, then eat, wait a couple hours, and come see me mm -hmm. so that we could have some energy to do a little bit of, of strength. Well, and you want them familiar with that state of being depleted and still having to perform at a high-intensity level, too. So it just makes sense that that would be you know, yeah. sort of the protocol. For yeah, that. but we this is a great example of looking at the mechanistic actions that are happening in the body and then extrapolating That's right. overall fat loss, mm -hmm. overall muscle gain, right? Oh, we're, we see more fat utilization, and then we and we conclude this means more fat loss. It doesn't work that way, right? If you're not in a calorie deficit, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're going to gain body fat. You could be using fat for fuel, but that does not mean that you're going to end up with less body fat on your body. Well, yeah, and you could also later on that afternoon go have three thousand calories of French fries and completely changes the results yeah. completely. From totally, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But it very everything. now, as far as what you said, Justin, about the warming up aspect. Um, I mean, obviously priming far superior far now is superior, doing yeah. a little bit of movement before you work out better than nothing. Probably yeah. not lots of it, but maybe a little bit. But if you had the choice, you know, instead of doing 10, 15 minutes on the treadmill, go do priming. The priming benefits the resistance training. It doesn't counter. It strengthens the muscles you want to connect to. It well, corrects imbalances. It gets you to move better. It gets you to feel more stable. That's where you should warm up. Not getting on. That's like 
the treadmill or the cycle. And I used to do this with clients because it's what we were taught. Okay, warm up for 10 minutes. It was such a cheap, you know, generic yeah. mm -hmm. way to warm up. And it had a little bit of value, but not a ton. Yeah, I think there, I mean, there is a misconception there, but I think you're right. It's it, the, the biggest confusion is the, the fat loss yes. side of it. That's, yeah. a, that's a great point. I think it's, I've just personally have seen it uh, from athletes I've worked with and also just like that sort of thought process going into it is like, well, I want to get my cardio done first and then I'll get the weight train. I'm always trying to talk them out of that in terms of like your priority right now is strength building. Like yeah. we need to build your body. Totally. So we need to focus on that. Now, one thing I could see where you might want to do cardio first is the person who knows if they do it first they'll do it but if they <laughs> yeah, don't right. do it first that's a good point they won't do it what, what a great argument you yep. know there's always you always have to you always have to take into account behaviors 100 percent. and if you're if you love weight training yeah. and you never miss weight training routines but you hate getting on the treadmill for 20 or 30 minutes with like that what a great example of this is where the studies don't even fucking matter no it mm -hmm. doesn't because now it's about i need you to do this you won't do it unless it is what a great it, that's it's a like great eating point. a plate of, of food and you're like okay this is the stuff i should eat and this is what i really want to eat and you're like, I'll eat the stuff I should eat first because I know I'll eat the other stuff no that's matter right. what. So in that case, I'd be like, then that's fine. Yeah. Do your cardio first. But everybody, I mean, that to me, mainly the people that I always had to go back and forth with was somebody who was, I want to build muscle and I want to burn body fat. It's the burning body fat and then what what is out there as far as like that one hour window, just like the fasted cardio research that's out there that makes mm -hmm. people think that, wait a second, my body's utilizing utilizing fat right now and instead of taking an account of the entire day and it's you know negligible yeah. what we're talking about. By the about. way, if you want to burn body fat and build muscle, first off, doing it at the same time is, unless you're a beginner, very, very impossible, almost impossible to do, very challenging. Yeah. But if that's still your goal and you want to try and do the impossible- Focus on the building part. Allow your body to burn those calories. Don't try to do them manually yourself because then you start to send competing signals and it becomes really, really challenging. But if you build muscle, you know, this is what I would see with clients, right? If I And if I did a good job, I would convince them of this. For the first few months, they wouldn't lose much body fat, but then the metabolism really just start to kick in. Yeah. And then they'd come to me. Time. Oh, and then they'd come to me and be like, this is so weird. And I would love this conversation because I would tell them that they're going to have this with me. I'll tell them three months ahead of time. I'd say, in three months, you're going to come to me and wonder why you're burning body fat because you're going to feel like you're eating a lot. And they'd be like, yeah, right. I'd say, okay, watch. And I'd write it down literally in their file so I could show them again. And then they'd tell me and I'd say, oh, wait, hold on. Once. And I'd grab their file and show them. So remember when I told you this? Your mm -hmm. metabolism is speeding up. And of course, they'd get real excited because that's exactly what was happening. That's why my goal was always to get a client, uh, get their metabolism up to a place where it was, it was hard for them to consume the amount of calories that I needed. That's to like consume. the goal, right? Because everybody would always ask, like, well, then what calorie target should I go for or how long should I do this for? And I'd say, you know, my goal personally is to keep increasing you calorie-wise till you finally look back at me and go, Adam, yeah, this is too much. It's too yeah. much. It's hard for me to keep up with that. Perfect. Now we're in a great place to go the other direction. And then it's like, it's almost like all I have to do is be like, oh, just, just don't worry about it. Don't try and get the... 3,000 calories yeah. I was trying to get you to have and just see where we land. Oh, look, so you naturally land around 25. Totally. And guess what ends up happening? <sighs> the body starts to drop. Absolutely. Hey, you guys, so this weekend I got a funny story to share with you guys or a cool story. Right. Has, does your wife, has your wife ever done one thing and you knew unequivocally like she did that one thing or like, she really loves me? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got one for you, right? Okay, so what is it? I so, mean, like so we're at the park. We took the, the baby to the park and we're hanging out and we go down by the creek and I'm teaching him to throw rocks, you know, so he's throwing rocks and, you know, in the water. And it's funny, by the way, if you were watch a one and a half year old try to throw a rock, it's like, it releases all off. He's like, let me go <laughs> yeah. straight down or whatever. Down. But we're having fun, right? We're playing or whatever. Then we get up and we start to walk out. And so a little backstory, you guys know, I think I've told you guys, my wife's, I'd say borderline phobia of spiders. Mm. I told you guys about yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's like, it's almost like a borderline phobia. Like she almost made us move. She, yeah, like she didn't want to live in the house because she found some spiders. Almost, yeah. We signed yeah. a two-year lease and everything. She wanted to move because she saw like three spiders. So this is how bad it is, right? Yeah. So we're walking and she, all of a sudden her face, she looks at me with this face and then she goes on attack mode and like hits my neck and like does this thing and then pulls my jacket off or whatever. And I'm like, what? And she's like, you had a big ass spider on you. I'm like, babe. And she got it, huh? I'm like, you didn't even flinch. <laughs> and then she was like, I didn't. I'm like, you saved my life. Like, normally, <laughs> you, my life. normally you see a spider. <laughs> this like, is love. Bro, we could be watching a movie. If a spider shows up on the screen, uh, she'll yeah. freak out. Like, that's yeah. how scared she is. <laughs> she saw one on me, dude, and she saved my life. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, I don't know how big it was. She, she said it was bypassed big, your own personal I fear. I, I told uh, her right there. I was, like, I was like, yeah, you really, you really love me. 
<laughs> was that this my weekend? Life, was that this weekend? Or that was this oh, weekend. Oh, it's funny too. that we were out throwing rocks with with Max too. Really? Doing, yeah, yeah. I was doing. The, I sh- I thought I put a video. I think I posted a video on my story of us. Mm-hmm. We we're out at Lake Tahoe uh, throwing the rocks. You know, uh, speaking of the kids, uh, the new funny thing that he does that I think is so funny because we're, we're, we're Ooh, words rock. are coming now, right? All these single words. Occasionally, he'll put string two together, and you can't get him to repeat. Um, you know, and, and, obvi- and he's very aware when it's time to change his diaper now and stuff. And so his new thing is this: like, so like, let's say him and I are playing or doing something with like that, and like he's got a, a poo poo diaper or something. Oh, he's yeah. like, oh, we got. Let me change your diaper, and she'll go grab him. And she'll take him to go do it. And he doesn't want to stop playing or whatever. And so he's like fighting her. To go this. And he says things like, help me, help me, help me, daddy. <laughs> no, to you? <laughs> yeah, dude. It's like, oh, honey, just let him be for a little bit. No, he's not going to sit and poop for a while. Just like, oh, it's so cute. So you he take his that. side? Yeah, dude. Oh, it's no hard, wonder it's hard not to. He doesn't say much. And then he says some shit like that. Help me. Yeah. Help me. Hey, I was having fun the other day because you, 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 he came in and uh, he didn't want to leave the studio. We had to yeah. record. Yeah. So first, I'll tell the audience, right? First, Adam is like, come on, buddy. We got to walk out. And he's like, no. And then he goes and jumps on Justin's lap. No, oh, this kid's smart. Yeah. So now Justin's he's playing with him. Yeah. So you guys leave him for a second, right? Then Justin has to go. So then he comes and sits on my lap. Yeah. And then I had fun because Katrina comes in to get him. Yeah. He's like, no, <laughs> no. And then so I'm playing along with it. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm sorry. Your mom wants to. I want you to stay with me. You can stay with me if you want. <laughs> You want to stay with me? And Katrina's looking at me like, motherfucker. You I do that all the time. Yeah, she gets, she gets so me. mad at me. It's just it's, it's so fun to play. He's definitely at this phase right now where uh, he's starting to understand what he he wants to do, what he doesn't want to do, like so, or what changing the diaper means, like he, what getting the haircut means. Yeah. Like he's definitely at that phase right now where he realizes everything that's going on around him. He knows what he likes to do, what he doesn't like to do, and he's starting to put up know. his little nah, I don't want to do that. I love it. Aurelius will become a little tyrant now. He's just yeah. He gets angry, and then he walks around the house and he finds shit and throws it. So he'll anything. He gets mad at me because I don't. What did he do? He did something like he did something, and I looked at him. I said no, and he gives me this little angry look, and he turns around, and Jessica, Jessica goes, "Watch, watch what he does." I'm like, "What's he gonna do?" And he walks over to one of the cupboards, opens it, grabs something, throws it on the floor. I'm like, "Oh my god!" And then he walks over to the thing, knocks something off the table. Then he walks over, and he's just walking around the house. <laughs> throwing shit like everywhere. He, like he owns it. I'm yeah. like, this yeah. kid is a tyrant. <laughs> like Godzilla. Yeah, and then I grabbed him and I held him and I was like, I'm going to put you in timeout. And then he hugged me. Like, this is an abusive relationship. Yeah. This kid is oh, <laughs> yeah. hilarious. Dude, it's, oh, it was funny. So I went to Vegas uh, over the weekend for my kid's gymnastic tournament. And uh, there was it was funny because there was the same experience me and Courtney both had when we went to the bathroom. And this is like, yeah, I know. Wait. But uh, there was like somebody on their speakerphone. So... Like While I was a dump or something like they just, okay. So this guy was like, I, he might've even been on FaceTime and he's just there near like the sink, just talking to his girl, like having like a heartfelt moment with his girl. Like they're working stuff out. Like, I don't know if I can trust you, honey. And blah, blah, blah. Like, in the bathroom. You know, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if you love me. Like I need you to love me. And I'm sitting there like in the urinal, just like, uh, you know, you should have jumped in. Like, well, yeah. I would have like, jumped in. I would be like, give him a chance. Like, yeah. like, give him another chance. You think here's a safe space to like let everybody in on your private moments? Some and, like, people are like, that's weird. Dude. I'm like, what is this? Like, and, and then same thing. Courtney was like, there was a stall next to her. The what if lady, they were talking to each other? The lady, maybe it was safe. Yeah, maybe it was. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. And like, there's, you know, she's like, yeah, there was like, there's some people lighting it up in there. And like, she's just like on speakerphone, just having all these conversations, like where everybody could hear it. Dude, what is wrong with like, people? Like, what, what, what are they doing? I always there? wonder like, what's, what's going through someone? Because there's people, I almost feel like some people do that, like, like to be heard. Yeah. Like you hear the way they're talking all super loud. You mean like and people who po- take a picture of themselves crying and post it on social media. <laughs> it's, it's probably the same, same people. Same yeah. people. Can, I, say, it's can I just say that right now? <laughs> if you're crying and you pause and take a picture of yourself and then post it, like, that's, you, I don't that's know. Okay. How are you okay. not embarrassed? Of so I don't know what I don't know what's worse. Look how sad I am. I don't know what's worse. The people, I, the people that do that, or the hundreds of people that that comment and be like, oh my God, like that, that play right into it. Who's worse? The person who stops and photographs himself to show this, this vulnerable moment, supposedly, or the hundreds of people that get wheeled right into it. You know, like I look, there's nothing wrong with crying and there's nothing wrong with someone catches you on camera crying. That would suck, but that's the deal. Right. But if you're, 
crying and it's genuine and you ha- and you pause. And you take out your own phone. To take a picture of yourself. You get on the, yeah. Like, oh, this is hey, a good listen, opportunity. Hey, listen, we, we, said, we said this a long time ago, okay? H- hence why we, we, we trademarked the stay authentic thing that- that this space would have this this you know social media and putting yourself out there sp- was going to have to move in the direction of being authentic and it most certainly is moving in that direction but part of what comes with it moving in that direction is a lot of people that manufacture it yeah is people trying tears to, are real yeah trying yeah. to be authentic or trying to be real or trying to be vulnerable by doing things like that i remember when i brought up the girls that the, there was a kick there for i don't know maybe six oh, months like i had a period look at my uh, period uh, yeah or they, they'd, they'd have an accident picture. and then be like photographing it and then showing <laughs> it online it's like <laughs> I want a guy to do it and be like, yeah. "Oh man, I sharted. Oh dude, at the airport <laughs> totally sucks. Here's yeah. a picture. I don't, get, I don't understand. I don't understand yeah, shit that. Down my leg. Look, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think a single, I don't think a single woman has ever that has had their period has never not experienced an embarrassment. Of that. And I don't think a single guy who's been with a girl, you know, ever no, that has, happens. Right, it happens. Yeah. It's just part of well, life. Why would it's you like, take a I picture? Like, yeah. I feel like talking about it like is a funny story or like sure. making like light of it is sure. great, but like but you yeah, have to taking prove a it. picture and all that just seems so bizarre that yeah, you would weird. think that that's your first thought is yeah. like, oh, I need to capture this. Speaking of regrettable things that are out in the media, <laughs> Justin, yeah, you made a comment about <laughs> gymnastics in a previous Thank episode. Thank you for bringing this. You're up. what? You're what? You feel Remember when we talked about gymnastics? His oh kids yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I just want them to do another sport. One that and I, he was I believe for I used adjective manly. Yeah, and I was like, I was like. Oh, Regrettably, I I have been thinking I've been milling that over over the weekend, especially because like I was at the tournament and I'm like watching these incredible uh, feats of, <laughs> of <laughs> you amazing, know, ma- amazing manly just, kids, <laughs> just just incredible, you know, like uh, well, no, it's uh, true, but, but I'm serious. It's like, crazy. I don't know why you said here, that. Look well, at because here's the thing, dude. You know, my brain is, uh, and I'm I'm insecure, obviously. Uh, you know, with uh, the way I grew up, I'm like anything pink or anything this. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. you know, and that's that's my shit. Yeah. You, know, you like, wear sandpaper for underwear. Just so yeah, I just enough. I'm like, oh, I just don't like anything that's like, yeah, anyways, like so. So that's that's where I'm coming from, and my kids chose gymnastics. I was like all about it because I know like logically like they're they're gonna get stronger, they're gonna have better body awareness, like all this stuff is it's gonna be able best, to translate. It's the best physical sport a kid could start to with. sports. Yeah. I want to see him play. Right there, you go. And, and that's where I'm coming from. But they're really getting into gymnastics, which is exciting. And like, dude, your um, kid's talented for them. Yeah, didn't one of them win the first place? In an yeah, event? so Ethan won first place uh, in, in the tumbling event. And um, it, Everett had a really rough, rough weekend. But before that, he had showed first place in a couple of the events. Wow. So and this it, is a big tournament. It's a big tournament. And the thing was, it was cool about it is I actually was able to see everything. Because what was frustrating in the other events was like, you'd go to a gym that was like, more of a um, like kind of a warehouse where it's like it's hard to see mm. what's going on. You don't know who's up and who's not. This was very organized. Wow. Like you had a huge room where you could see the entire room and like it was kind of fenced off. So you kind of go sit down and you watch one event. You go around. You watch the other event. All of their scores get get uh, posted immediately. So it was like it was just cool to watch like everything, um, how they had it all organized. And so this was a much better setup. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, <laughs> I did feel guilty about that. I'm like, <laughs> so now I'm like, I, I need to pour myself more into this world and understand it more. And so I've been like trying to, <laughs> trying to like figure out how they score things, all the little nuances. And I'm like getting back, got inspired to get back into ring training. Uh, and so I set that up at my house oh, good uh, under my deck. So I'm going to start doing that again. You know what? You're, you're that's a good. By the way, that's a good dad right there because you're you have the things. That, I'm going to come to your defense, Justin. You have the things <laughs> for that, your Archie Bunker moment. N- no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it, it is. Totally was. You, you're going to you're going to go. You're, I think you actually are starting to go through this, Adam. What's that? You have the things that you enjoy that you did as a kid or that you do now that you connect with. Yeah. You want your kid to do those things because you already like them. You already like those things. And then your kid maybe chooses something different. So there's a moment there where you're like, damn it, why don't you like what, you know, whatever. And then you know what? If you really love your kid, you're like, then you get into what they get into. Like my son, my son did robotics. He competed at high level robotics. I don't know anything. I didn't know anything about robotics at all. I did judo and weight training, but I did the same thing. I went to a robotics tournament, had no idea what the hell was going on. Yeah. 
But I dived my, you know, I kind of dived into it and learned about it, and you know, that's what you yeah, do. Now I'm kind of, yeah, I'm trying to like get into it. I got, <laughs> I got a sweatshirt, you know. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I'm like gymnastic dad. I saw a dad out there. It's funny. I, I connect gymnastic with this, dad. That's this one funny. dad. He, he had one that was like gymnastic dad, and he had a barcode scan here for money. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's brilliant. I need yeah. that shirt because uh, it, it it is. It's always like, oh, you got to pay. Didn't for this. mean to cut you off. I don't know oh yeah, no, Justin's Archie bunker story is was reminding me of something i saw bear you know uh, contain yourself here too that i thought was really really interesting stat so 2012 3.5 percent of the population identified with the lgbtq community in 2012 now that's jumped up to 7.5 percent today gen z is estimated at 20.3 percent wow Wow. Well, wow. That's a lot. That's a big it jump. Is. Yeah. So, and some of the. You know, identifies as in they're a part of it? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I mean, so they, they're speculating that it's the, the, the real number is probably closer to 10. I mean, and it, it kind of highlights, and I don't know if we talked on air, we've talked off air about this, about that the pendulum had, had swung yeah. from one direction and now it's kind of overcorrecting the other and we'll probably land somewhere more even like say around 10 percent yeah because 20 something percent is a pretty high number like, as far as how many kids that probably identify with that but they're also probably going through this young phase which i was telling you the other day when we were talking about this with i know what your kid went through what was it like six months ago or whatever at school justin like when he went through that i was like that's so crazy to me that that's happening yeah. at, at schools right now but i mean it also is very normal that kids kind of do that, right? We we rebel against one direction, then go the yeah. opposite direction, and so. Well, I think it's it highlights something that's true that uh, sexuality is not uh, black and white. It's it's been it's a spectrum. We've identified it as a spectrum for a long time, and I think that when you're a kid and you're getting you're coming of age, right? You're going to be more open to experiences. You're learning different things. And because it's more acceptable, and maybe even part, maybe even considered cool mm -hmm. by by some of your friends or not, doesn't matter. But it's definitely more acceptable. You're more likely to e either uh, experiment or experiment verbally and with your thoughts. But it's obvious it's a fucking spectrum. Okay, there's a lot of real manly straight dudes that go to prison and act very very gay when they go to prison. Women obviously much more acceptable for a long time for them. To do certain things, part of it's because other men in encourage it, right? They'll you know watch the girls make out in the club or whatever. But it's a it's a spec it's definitely a spectrum. So that's all we're we're seeing right now. And I think I think part of it though has become trendy and cool. Sure, I yeah. mean, and w which I think that that highlights that three percent to seven percent to jump to twenty percent. Sure, is a huge number. And I think it's again it's a, from the overcorrection from where we were just say twenty years ago yeah. to where we're now to now where it's become like a a cool thing to, yeah, be able yeah, to yeah. say that you do. You yeah, know? it's it's mm -hmm. it's way more complicated than we make it uh, look. And sex is not. Boy, you know what percentage of sex is to procreate that humans use? Such a small percentage. The majority of everything we do sexually is to connect, to whatever. Like, le There's lots of other reasons why, sex, why we have sex, and only a small percentage of it is to procreate. So it's very complex. So it makes, it makes perfect sense to me. That that you would see that, especially in a younger generation. Yeah. Now, do you? I, I know Justin shows. So, do you? Have, do your kids share any of that? Do you, Do you hear it from them coming? Well, from I'm school? actually really proud of my kids because um, when I when we were growing up in the '90s, if you came out and said, um, "Hey, look, I don't," if somebody's you know gay or whatever, like I don't care, it's not a big deal. Or if you came out and said, "Yeah," I mean, you got to remember, uh, gay marriage was not even supported by a majority of Americans up until like after 2008. It hasn't been that long. Mm -hmm. When we were kids majority definitely did not support. It wasn't even a topic, right? So if you came out when we were kids and said that, it was like a big deal and you might even get uh, bullied or whatever. Now it's much it's much different. And I, I like to see that in my kids because I see my kids are very much like, hey man, you know, you should, people are gonna, if they're, if they're cool, they're cool and mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. And you know, I have friends that are gay, I have friends that are straight. So it's not the same like when we were kids at all. I think that's not a bad thing, obviously. No, I, think that's I, a good I don't thing. think yeah. it's like that at all. That's why I was curious to hear if your kids have uh, talk about it more yeah. or not. Like, I'm, I don't have kids that are in age yeah. where that's like, I feel like they, you don't start talking about stuff like that until like junior high going into high school, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't but, know if I brought that uh, story up on the show, uh, just yeah, with, with uh, how that kind of went down. And it, it really, it was just once Ethan got into like junior high 
where it started to kind of like that became more prevalent in terms of, um, you know, people identifying uh, with with that like strongly. And so like he he would walk past a group of kids that were very outspoken um, you know, with their pride and whatnot, and was at, were actually punking kids uh, that for not straight kids for yeah. not being gay. Yeah, which is weird, but very strange. But it's again like just to, again the, the pendulum swinging, and yeah. so yeah, and so he's just been struggling through that. Is like, how, what do I say? Because you know, it's always been you know we've always like thought of that as like we're trying to like make sure like uh, you know they're they're considered and, and and protected and like this is all like that you know my generation like looking out for for kids that have like differences and whatnot and then it's like just to, to see the bullying happen from that side is really side. frustrating yeah. oh yeah super yeah. I'll tell you what's what's setting back what's setting them back I'll say the LGBT community right now I'll make a very controversial I don't think it's a controversial statement what's hurting them right now more than anything are these athletes these uh these trans athletes that are competing with cisgender women that is pure gaslighting and anybody with a brain can see there was a there was a college athlete that just blew away records the swimmer yeah. swim blew away yeah. records like cru i mean you guys know how close how closely competitive well, he was ranked as a man uh, right you so as a, as a as yeah. a as a biological man then yeah. transitioned competed with women and blowing them away crushing records which now the whole reason why there's they were separated in the first place was because otherwise women would have no opportunities for scholarships for recognition they would get blown away in most sports this is not a controversial thing this is very factual the the physical advantages do not get erased completely some yeah. do but not all of them with uh, hormone therapy and transition stuff so this to me is hurting them because lots of very open accepting loving people are looking at this and going wait a minute like you this is a little too far like you know this this woman is obviously has a massive advantage over these other competitors and is not just breaking beating them they're smashing records by margins that you, you don't see well, i think they just weren't yeah. i don't think they were ready for this to happen like this and i i personally think it's no. going to get corrected i think that they're going to they're going to do a, a, a separate category so I, but I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's getting too much attention and I don't see too many people that are supportive of it, especially anybody that understands that. Like, of course, the first initial reaction is leave them alone. It's, you know, whatever. But it's like, if you don't understand, if you don't understand the science of what's going on here, well, even it's not very fair. Well, even beyond the competing side of it, like there's parents that have, you know, uh, made sure to, to, to voice their concerns about even just the locker room because, you know, like she obviously still has her, her bits, yeah. you know, has yeah. has her her penis and whatnot and it's like you know dressing uh you know in front of all the girls in there and like in and, and flaunting it around and yep. so it's like you don't want to talk about these things is it's an uncomfortable truth but you know th this has been happening too with like science camp that i read recently with um uh, you know, counselors that identify as non-binary that are in, you know, young girls yeah. uh, cabins. And, and so where do you draw the line? Yeah. Uh, like, it, honestly, you have to consider these things and you can't, yeah. you can't just be yeah. ultra accepting knowing that there's going to be wrongs that are going to happen no, this, as a result. The problem is, is that um, there's no like clean, easy answer when no one's feelings get hurt. That's the challenge. Yeah. So, so it's like, you know, th the answer is, to be objective and say, okay, I understand that you're, you transitioned and you are now, you know, by law, uh, considered female and that's totally fine. And you identify as a female. And I think if you're a good person respecting and someone, and you know, someone, I think you should consider them that way. I, I don't think you should, you know, call them anything else. That being said, uh, there are clear scientific, biological, physical advantages that do not get erased. So we can objectively say there is a biological advantage coming from the fact that you're, you were born a uh, biological male. Yeah. You can say that, and then you can say, we have these categories, and unfortunately, this is not fair to people who were born female, so we're gonna have to create another category. Yes, does that mean that they're being pointed out, or you know, are they gonna, yeah, it does, and it sucks, but that doesn't mean you can change the kind of the facts, yeah. and in the meantime, you're getting, like there's, there's female athletes who've trained their entire lives, Mm -hmm. who, right, so let's say, you know, first, second, and third. Let's say they normally would have been third. Now they're out because yeah. first place was this other person. Or let's say you're second and you broke the record by like a millisecond, but yeah. it doesn't count because the person who went, went ahead of you broke the record by five seconds or something ridiculous like that. Right, right. And I think it's harming, it's definitely harming the movement. I think people need to be 
objective. That's all. I definitely think people should be treated with respect. Right. But this right here is a little. It's just. Well, don't insane. do you think? Do you think it's going to get corrected? I think it's going to get corrected. I think I, it's just. I think, like I said, I, think I, I don't think bodies, we. I don't think we saw this coming as fast as it. Like it seems like every. It seems like almost every day there's an article about yeah, somebody yeah. who's 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 breaking a you know woman's record now. I, and I and I think once you start seeing more and more uh, biological females losing scholarships mm -hmm. or losing out on a medal by a, a quarter of a second or whatever like that, I think the more and more those stories come forward, the more they they're going to realize that okay, these aren't just one or two anomalies. Like this is it's it's getting increasingly higher and more happening 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 more often than not. It's time we. Well, the problem this is out. is that these major governing bodies have already made their decision. So you have governing bodies for uh, for college sports. Yeah, but it wouldn't be the first you time have the they Olympics. go back on something. You have the Olympics. These are the gold standard, right? So now what the governing bodies are going to have to do, which is going to be really hard, is they're going to have to come out and admit we messed up, we were wrong. Mm -hmm. That is a much harder thing to do than they sh than first coming out and saying, uh, you know, let's do more studies at very least if they don't want to be, you know, super honest and clear or or come out and say I'm sorry there are advantages that don't get erased from, you know, from transition therapy and hormone therapy. But now they've already made the decision. Yeah. Getting them to go back, backwards, and it's been politicized now. And so. just seems both sides just dig their heels in and there's no like real reasonable uh answer provided so far in terms of how we're gonna move forward yeah. and it's gonna be objective. Well, speaking of hormones, are you guys excited for me to make some ribs that have no hormones in it for you guys? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I want some, like that transition, Doug, to get like us it. out of there. That's very I want good. Some I got you, Doug. Ribs, I got you. Some Doug was like, get me out there. of this, get me out of this. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, Doug. How about Master that non hormone meat I'm gonna be making you guys. I'm excited about ribs. Are you gonna, yeah, yeah, are you yeah. going to do a rub? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I'll, I'll smoke some ribs for us. So I'm excited. So I'm excited for all of us. To Which go ones up. are the beef or pork? Pork. Yeah, I mean, yeah. These are the heritage pork from. Now you're the one Boss. that pours like a bit of um, uh, beer on it, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I used beer one time because I didn't have something. I think I didn't have applesauce. Yeah. yeah or apple juice. Excuse me. And Doug was like, "Oh, you could use beer." And I was like, "Really?" And I was like, "All right." Was but it I, better? It was really good. So I've, since then, I've actually used the beer. So I actually like the beer. I feel it. like ribs, mm -hmm. you either do a really great job or they're terrible. Not yeah. you, but, uh, but uh, people. In general, that's true. In general. like yeah. I, either, If I have ribs, it's either really yeah. good or, mm -hmm. oh, this is terrible. Have you seen that video? Of the, uh, there's this place, I think it was on Barstool, but they did it with chicken where it's like, if it doesn't fall off the bone, then you know you get it for free. And it like, just oh, shakes yeah. it like this and the meat just, oh, just yeah. falls right off. Oh, so good. That's that's when you got it like money. So so the so I've so you have had the ribs from Butcher Box. Oh, you man. haven't had the pork chops yet. The pork from Butcher Box, taste wise, forget health and all that stuff. That's yeah. important. Taste wise blows everybody away. Well, I remember when I first started smoking their their pork ribs. And I can't remember, it was like, I, it was, this was right when I was on a kick where I was doing it a lot. Like almost every weekend I was smoking these ribs because they were so good. And I was messing with the recipe. And one one week I didn't have their pork ribs. So I went down to like Safeway and grabbed some some pork ribs and didn't realize how much. And it, it didn't dawn on me because I was expecting, you know, how the grass-fed beef is where if I go and get regular beef, that it tastes, yeah. it actually tastes. Grass-fed beef is less fatty, therefore sometimes not as like tasty or whatever. Yeah, I mean, let's Their be honest. You get, it's heritage pork. Yeah, totally which different. is different. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of expected that same, I thought, oh man, I'm kind of, I was out of the butcher box. I was like, oh, this kind of be cool. I'll experiment with Safeways. I, it'll see how good it tastes or because it'll be fattier or whatever. I thought it was actually going to taste better mm -hmm. and it tastes like shit compared to yes. theirs. So I was really surprised. I'm not now I won't even, I won't even mess with Dude, pork Dude, I'm not a pork fan. I don't like pork chops. I'm not, I'll have ribs sometimes, but it was when we got the butcher box pork chops and I ate them. You know what it reminded me of? When I went to France years ago, went on vacation to Paris and I had some pork and I couldn't believe how good it tasted. And then I had some ham, and then I had some bacon, and I asked somebody there, so why is the pork so good here? And then they told me something about the pigs being different. I think they were serving heritage pork, and that's the butcher. It's totally different. You guys it's have a favorite side dish to go with ribs? You, what do you prefer, Doug? Do you have uh, something you like to put on? Well, I do. Uh, it's not the most healthy. Well, yeah, I, I, love, I love baked beans. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, and, of course, sure. cornbread. Oh, oh cornbread and mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah mashed potatoes and even potato salad. I, I like. can't do milk though. Uh, if you yeah. make mashed potatoes, butter's fine, but no milk. I know. What are you gonna do? Uh, yeah. I know, stupid. <laughs> give you I'm such no a dairy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There you go. It's all right. You gotta do the yeah, nerdy voice when you talk yeah. about. <laughs> hey, you guys wanna hear a, uh, an old man moment? Yeah. So every once in a while, if you guys I'm sure you guys have experienced this, we're older, we're wiser, 
yeah. the young man ego gets quelled, but every mm-hmm. once in a while, something triggers the male we ego. Get hair in our ears now. Yeah, yeah. some yeah. something comes the ma- some triggers your male ego, and the and you're just like, oh, there's there's my 18 year old. All right, where were you peacocking at? What was it, dude? I was driving, <laughs> so I was driving over here, and this car pulls up next to me, and it's a Mustang, and it's all you know souped up or whatever. There's two kids in there, right? Oh I say two kids, they're probably in their 20s. And they see me, and obviously my, my car's performance or whatever. So they, I, I could see them looking at me, and the guy's inching forward. And in my head, and I used to drive like an asshole when I was, I still drive like an asshole, but I used to drive like a real asshole back in the day. So I can, I have a sixth sense for when there's assholes trying to race me or whatever. Mm. So I'm like, oh, this guy's trying to fucking, yeah, dude. Uh, but I'm looking straight ahead. I won't even make eye contact because I know if I make eye contact, then I have to race him because otherwise I'm going to push him. <laughs> have to. I have to. <laughs> so I'm not going to do anything, right? So he starts inching forward. Light turns green. He boah, takes off, right? So then I kind of take off. And I go a little faster than normal, but I don't do anything. He goes, and then he slows down and comes next to me. And then he takes off a little bit and slows down. Do you look over at you like? And, yeah, and he's like, slow down. And I'm like, the chicken. So I had to look. I had to look. And the dude gives me a thumbs up. And he's like, yeah, you know, let's, whatever. Let's go, right? And I'm like, fuck, man. Okay. So the, light, the next No light, wife and kid in the car? Hell no. Car seat in the back, though. Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 I do have a car yeah, seat yeah, in the back. Yeah. <laughs> no. If yeah, Jessica's yeah. in the car, she yeah. would have murdered me, bro. Robotics dad sticker. On so, the way, yeah. yeah, we drive. So we hit the next light. So I switch it into like performance mode or whatever. I'm like, all right, dude, we're gonna we're gonna make yeah. this happen. I haven't raced somebody in a long time, bro. <laughs> Light turns green, boom, we take off, and I smoke him right, and I smoke him. I go in front of him, do the hazards, the whole deal. You know, you get in front of him, hit the hazard lights. Yeah. I won. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He pulls up. Hey, he pulls up next to me. The we signal. give each other we give each other the thumbs up, and uh, and I was like, man, that feels good. Sometimes it <laughs> wasn't it wasn't it him who was giving, was he razzing me when I told that story? I think you were razzing me when I told I that know. story. Oh yeah, the uh, same exact thing where that kid pulled up next to me and I was driving the because I was when you told the story, I was my wiser older self listening. Yeah, you understand? <laughs> so yeah, I he didn't have the cool more. car that he has now. That That's all the difference. With, you know what I'm saying? That's it's it. like it's like when you no, got bro, it's anybody in anything back in the day. I was. It's an asshole. About yeah, it. but there. But when you when you finally have someone that's got as much power as what you got yeah, now, dude, that's a, it's, then it's, uh, it's a little tempting. Yeah, yeah, half half the reason it, why you get that much power so you could ever, to yeah. pull it out every I now mean, and every now and then. Yeah, know? but yeah, I know. Just I mean, let it out. You make it happen. And afterwards, you think to yourself, like, why did I do that? Like, was that even you know? Like ten minutes later, bro. I had a huge out. rush from it. It felt hella good. I did it, and I was like on a high for like the next hour. Now I remember why I did that as a kid. I told you guys the story of my dad, right? So my dad, he's worse with this kind of stuff him and my brother drove in separate cars once to sacramento to visit family on the way back remember he's a he's doing this with his son so this is even level 10 levels worse they're racing on the freeway and they're hitting 100 120 whatever on the freeway my brother gets pulled over by a police officer by a highway patrol because my dad was ahead my brother gets pulled over my dad gets off on the exit and comes back around and the cop the, my dad pulls up. My dad, my the cop comes out. And goes, hey, you know, I wasn't gonna let you go because I saw you racing, but now you're gonna get a ticket too. So they had to go home, <laughs> and my dad had to explain to my mom yeah. how my brother, who at the time was like 19, got a ticket racing him. Yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine the, how bad, how mad my mom was. Oh, my your dad, mom was the, at my dad the whole destroyed time. Destroyed him. I know. Anyway, <laughs> hey, I got something cool to talk about with uh, with training. Um, so you know how we we typically recommend on the podcast, like going to failure is too much intensity. F- most of the time for most people, yeah. yeah, which is true. It tends to get abused. Um, however, it can be a tool that can be utilized to really speed up gains in a short period of time. And I'm, I've been experimenting a lot with failure training. This is for a new uh, potential program that will maybe put together in the future. But anyway, a couple things I learned about going to failure that I think are really important. I th- First off, you should definitely use it sparingly. But second, Going to failure with higher reps is far more effective than going to failure with lower reps. Mm. So like instead of picking a weight that makes you fail, and of course, always do it safely, but instead of failing at six, seven, or eight reps, which is what I would consider low reps in this context, pick a weight that makes you fail around you know, 12, 13, 14, or is 15. Is that just because it's a bit less damaging? It's actually more. It's less risky, so the risk mm. is lower the because the weight's lighter. Yeah, I was going to say, by that – by those rules, you could do it more frequently because of that too. Well, the damage is actually muscularly wise. You send a. I feel like I get more muscle and less joint tendon right. and CNS. Yeah. 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 So I feel like it's more beneficial. Yeah. More frequently. Then, yeah. It pressure the hinges quite as, yeah. as intensively. Yeah. And if you read if you read the studies on failure training, they show that high rep failure, lower rep failure, 
it really doesn't make a difference so long as you go to failure. And the big one of the big challenges I have with failure, besides it being abused, is at some point, especially if you become more advanced, the weight that you use to go to failure starts to get uh, um, the risk factor is too high, right? Because mm -hmm. now you're lifting heavier weight, you fail, your form falls off a little bit. Uh, you know the risk factor is a little high for for injury. But if you're aiming for 12 to 15 reps, it's probably a weight you can handle really well with good form. Well, I, I think this is why um, bodybuilders get away with it, and I think why they do it so often, because they don't rarely ever do you see a bodybuilder failing at one, two, or three reps. Yeah, most or, or even six, seven, or eight. Yeah, yeah. And normally they're training 10, 12, 15 reps, and so it's probably, I mean, <clears throat> and then you figure a lot of them are enhanced, so they can get away with it, I think, mm -hmm. more than the average person. The only thing that I would caution people with that is, is you know, there is plenty of to research to prove that there's benefits to doing it the problem with it is that you get caught up in doing it all yep. the time that's exactly what happened that's to me. what i'm down too and that's times. what i'm putting together right now that's why yeah if you're going to do it i i recommend that you do it program so it's like okay this next phase i'm going to incorporate failure training then i'm out of it you know mm -hmm. versus you know oh wow that felt great or oh my god i'm getting stronger yeah. and then wanting to do it well, all without the time. saying too much i've been experimenting with some different programming myself very effective doug's messing with it i'm having uh, andrew mess with it and a couple other people and uh, it's the results are really good. So, yeah. and I'm not going to say too much because I haven't ironed it out. Um, but yeah, you know, stay tuned because I think there's going to be some some cool stuff uh, yeah. come out of it. Speaking of different stuff, um, and our other commercial, our partner with Felix Craze, I've been seeing tons of blue blockers on the market. It seems like everybody is kind of and the and it used to be that they were like one of the only ones that were clear lenses and kind of fashionable. But now there's like all kinds of fashionable ones. There's all kinds of clear ones. And they're like way cheaper than what Felix Gray is. But I remember when we first were talking to Felix Gray, when we first, and they, didn't they have like a, a, a patent on they their, do. they do. Don't yeah. They? Doug, can you pull up? Oh, there you go. So actually good jobs quick. So they have a proprietary lens in it's, so this is how they explain it. They embed a naturally occurring blue light filtering ocular pigment into the lens. Proprietary meaning it doesn't, uh, no other blue blockers have this. So it's a perfect balance between clear and effective. So the problem with clear uh, typically is they're not nearly as effective as the orange or red lenses. Right. right. So you have to trade. Okay, do I either block a lot of blue light, but now I look at everything as orange or red, or do I go with the clear lenses, but it's not nearly as yeah. effective. So that's always been the trade, but with Felix Ray, it's not really. So they say that it has the added benefit of blocking UV rays as well as applying a premium AR coating to block 100% of glare. And they have two. Uh, the they also block a greater percentage of a particular type of blue light mm -hmm. that comes off of electronics. Electronics, yeah. yeah. So a lot of other clear lenses, there's a uh, a it's wavelength. Like, of blue, it's like it's significantly fifteen times more effective. Yeah, so fifteen it's like two, times more. Yeah. Yes. So it's two, you'll typically get in a lot of these other clear lenses, it'll block two percent of this particular wavelength of blue light that'll mm -hmm. come off of electronics, which is almost nothing. Whereas Felix Ray with their with their proprietary lens will block thirty percent. Yeah. So you're getting a lot of the benefits you'd get from colored lenses. So if you've ever worn color lenses, you know how strong they are. You put them on and you get tired, mm -hmm. you know, uh, an hour into it, which is great before bed. Then you wear clear lenses and it's not nearly as effective usually. But with Felix Grey, you, you get the best of both worlds. It's clear, but it's also super effective. So that's what you're paying for. Yeah, as I said, another example of you pay for what you get. Kind of like that conversation we just had with Mike the other day with supplements. You yep. know, it's like sometimes people are trying to, oh, I can get it for half the price over here. Well, you get half the shit yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's what happens. You pay for it all yeah. the time. Hey, real quick, you got to check out Live On Labs. They have the best delivery methods for nutrients you'll find anywhere. Okay, so you could be taking B vitamins. You could be taking vitamin C or glutathione but you're not getting it where you want to because it's destroyed in your digestive system. Not the case with Live On Labs. They have a liposomal technology delivery system. This was designed for pharmaceutical companies. So this company is incredible, and there's a huge promotion we're doing right now with them. You'll actually get free liposomal glutathione when you bundle it with the B vitamin complex and vitamin C. So you'll get free liposomal glutathione. I love it, by the way. I take that every single day. It's good for recovery. It's good for pumps. But more than anything, it's great for the immune system. Low levels of glutathione have been connected to severe cases of respiratory illnesses with specific viruses. Got to, glutathione's amazing. Liposomal glutathione, you actually absorb. So go check them out. Head over to liveonlabs.com. That's L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S.com forward slash M-P for that promotion. All right, 
here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Chris from Wisconsin. What's up, Chris? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I just turned 41. I've uh, been lifting for a while, consistently for probably 10 years. And one of the things that I've noticed really in the last six to eight months is when I run a uh, strength phase, so five by five or right now in MAPS aesthetic in the low rep high weight range, I make pretty good progress for a couple of weeks and adding weight to the bar. And then I just get stuck. And the last time I ran a five by five, first two or three weeks, great. And then I just get stuck and can't seem to get anywhere. So I'm just wondering, is this, is this an age thing? Is it uh, something I should be doing different? How can I change my training to, so I don't get plateaued or stuck like that? Yeah, there's, there's a lot to unpack here. So I'm going to mm. start with um, can we ask a couple more? I want to know how long you've been training for. Yeah, you said many years. That's where I was going to go. Uh, how many years have you been consistently working out? Consistently strength training, probably about five or six years or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, are you noticing improvements in plateaus? And then do you maintain those plateaus until you cycle out, go back in and then improve again? Or does it go down and up? It goes down and up. Yeah. So there's a couple things that we need to unpack here. Now, the first thing is that you, you may be only measuring your progress by one metric, which might not be the, the, the only metric you need to look at. Okay, so at some point, you're not going to keep getting stronger, right? So at some point, there's limits to the amount that you're, you're going to be able to lift. Like, look, I'm, I'm, you and I are close in age. I don't look at strength gains like I used to because I'm not going to – I mean, if it was always – you know, if I was always going to progress in strength by now, I'd be, you know, bench pressing a thousand pounds. So strength, although it's a great metric, it's one of my favorite metrics to look at. It's not the only metric. So you can also look at control. You can look at stability, mobility, range of motion, feel, connection, the pump, of course, stamina, mm. uh, endurance. These are all other metrics you might want to measure because you've been working out for so long and because of your age, you might not want to always look at strength. Now, the, the other thing I'd like to comment on is that it's not unusual for someone to progress for a few weeks and then plateau, which is why we phase all of our programs, right? And when we phase our programs in like a phase one, for example, of MAPS Anabolic, we are looking at strength. But by the time we get to phase two and three, I don't care so much about how strong you are, but rather how's the feel, how's the pump, are you noticing better pumps in your workouts? How's are you getting better form? connected? Yeah, how's your technique and your form? So you want to look at all this stuff. And if you look at progress, if we were to chart somebody's progress after, if, if it's the first year, we see relatively linear strength gains, right? I'm, I, I'm assuming your first year of training, you saw relatively consistent strength gains in, in most of your lifts. But when you stretch that out to you know three years, five years, six yeah. years, 10 years- It's increasingly difficult. Yeah, and it's not linear. It looks- it looks more like a step ladder and it comes down a little bit and it goes up a little bit. And then if we start to chart other things like my squat depth, my control, my pain, learning new exercises and stamina, then we see that we tend to trend upwards, but it doesn't look like this wonderful consistent line. You have to kind of look at the, at the big picture. Now, of course, you know, we could, there could be an issue with diet. There could be an issue with sleep. You might be doing too much for your body. Like those are all the obvious things. That because I'm assuming you probably looked at a lot of that considering you've been working out as long as you have. So I, ha I have, you know, uh, I, I, my real first foray in this foray in the strength training was the five by five. And I've been listening to you guys for a long time and, um, I've run aesthetic twice, uh, and got tremendous results just because the hardest thing for me was to do the hear what you guys talk about so much is do, which is what you're not, which is yeah. getting out of that low rep, you know, grind. Mm -hmm. And, um, so yeah, I have been lifting for a while and, and I've tempered down the volume. I mean, three days for me is plenty, three hard days. So, um, yeah. Well, that brings up another uh, potential point there too, is you've, you've been, not only have you been training, you know, pretty consistent for so many years, but the way you were training consistently for so many years was it sounds like primarily five by five. So we're going to see probably the least amount of gains and progress in, in as far as weight and strength in the five by five. But are, I mean, are you paying attention to your, when you're in the 10 to 12 rep range? Like how is, how is that getting better? Like, are you able to do more weight 
uh, when you move into a phase like that because you haven't been doing it as long and are you still progressing in other phases? So the fa the the phase one of MAPS Anabolic is going to be the hardest for you to see the most results from because it's what your body is most used to. So where I would be looking for the, the, the greatest gains or change or progression would be when I'm actually doing things that I, I hadn't been doing that consistently, like a new exercise, a new way of training, a different modality, stuff like that, form and technique, depth, range of motion, that type of thing is what I'd, I'd be kind of focused on right now and trying to progress in those areas. Is there, Chris, is there like a specific um, lift that you you would like to see really go up is it or is it just in general i think in general i my bench has always been the one that i've had the most trouble with um you know and and you know i i've liked i'd like to get to that three four five plate that i think every guy wants to get to i've realized i'm just maybe not going to get there but i just always struggle with my bench uh just cannot just you know adding weight to it is just you know it's really tough, and uh, that's always the one that I'm the we I've been the weakest on. Are you so? It sounds like strength is your favorite thing about training. I, have you looked at our Maps Powerlift program? Mm -hmm. uh, I have not. I've run uh, uh, oh. aesthetic twice. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I love uh, the Especially mobility the program you guys got. Uh, no, I have not. Oh, yeah, let yeah. me send you Maps Powerlift yeah. because that's a you know, strength that's is a interesting. Suggestion. Strength is an interesting metric. Now I like it for most people. But it gets it gets a little weird as you get more advanced. Like I've seen people lose weight and muscle mass and increase the, their their the amount of weight they can lift on specific exercises because their skill and technique got better. Right? Mm -hmm. You see this in powerlifting, especially in the weight classes. I've also seen people gain lots of muscle size with a very small, con you know, concurrent rise in muscle and strength. So you'll see like uh, you know a, a powerlifter convert to bodybuilding, gain thirty pounds of muscle but they only get like 10 pounds stronger in many of their lifts and some of the lifts don't go up at all. So mm -hmm. it's very, it's very interesting once you get to a particular level. Now, if I'm talking to the average person and I'm talking to, especially if I'm talking to a newbie, like strength is wonderful. Let's go after it. But once you get more advanced, it's a very interesting metric and it can change because of technique and form and how, you know, how, how amped your CNS is. And you can also build muscle without getting stronger. Uh, because of It'd other be factors. It'd be interesting if, if technique was the part of this equation that was sort of limiting your, your progress as well. And I think that a lot of people kind of don't really attribute that as maybe a factor of just polishing and refining uh, you know, the, the actual mechanics of the lift and, and really like hyper focusing on it. So that means practicing it a lot, but, you know, really, uh, you know, monitoring your intensity around it. So it's, it's appropriate, uh, for you to progress and adapt. So I think that powerlifting, you know, in my opinion, is probably a, a great shift, uh, for you to focus into. I would also, if you were, if you were a client of mine or even or a friend of mine, even Chris, I would, I would try and persuade you, um, I know we just went and talked about powerlift and I would love to see you do it, but I'd also like to try and persuade you to change our goals too a little bit, right? Cause you know, you've been, you've been doing the five by five thing. You've been a very, you know, strength focused metric is what you've been paying attention to. It sounds like you have listened to some of the advice we've given. So you're starting to move out of the phases. I mean, the next progression for me as a, as a coach for you would be like, okay, now I've at least got you dabbling in other phases. Now actually let's, let's talk about different goals. Like how about we really work on getting your squat depth or your, your technique on, on a certain lift or, or how about I teach you a new, like, I don't know if you've done Turkish get ups or done move like circus press. Let's like, let's focus on a, a do new conventional lift. Yeah, exactly. Do something different and, and, and set some goals. So you have something to kind of pursue and watch yourself progress and I just I, I find that there's um, there's a there's definitely a, a mental advantage to doing this with yourself. I mean, this is the, to, for me this is the only thing that's allowed me to be lifting consistently for 20 years is that I'm constantly also changing my goals. And a lot of times it's not necessarily because I really want to. It's that I think it's it's kind of a mental game that I'm playing with myself. It's like okay, I've been chasing this. You know, I want to I want to look a certain way and get shredded and be the, this this bodybuilder guy for so long. You know what? What if I completely disrupt that and go, I'm going to be mobility guy and I'm not going to think about weights. I know I'm going to get a little bit weaker. I don't really care. I know I can always get that back. Now I'm just going to see how mobile can I get? How deep can I get my squats? And can I get rid of some of this pain that I was dealing with in my hips? Like, and I shift my goal and it gives, and what's nice is when you shift to a new goal that you've never really focused on like that before that you, you get to experience 
some of those progressions like you got when you were a newbie again because it's kind of a, a new thing. But when you're still chasing the, I want to get stronger, I want to get stronger, yeah, you're changing phases, but you're still in that mindset. Sometimes it can get a little discouraging because they just... It just doesn't come on like that yeah. anymore like it used to. You yeah, know? I do think you'll like MAPS Powerlift, though, just just from what I'm hearing about what you enjoy doing. I think you'll like that program. I think you'll see the strength gains that you're looking for. Oh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, congrats on your success. Oh, you guys no, are awesome. Th thank you very much. Thank, thank appreciate you, it. Thanks for calling in. Yeah, keep us posted, man. See you guys. See you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> it is interesting, right? Once you get to a certain level, strength is interesting. Like we were talking to Ben Pollock, who gained like, what, 80 pounds of mass? <laughs> yeah. And his strength was kind of what it was when he was competing at 190 pounds as, yeah. a, you know, as a power lifter versus now as a bodybuilder, right? But he's gained so much muscle. Um, so it's, it is interesting. And it's when you get stuck on a metric, at some point you're screwed. Like, I don't care what that metric is, well, yeah. you know, muscle size, endurance, stamina, yeah. build, like strength. Well, I think Adam, your advice is sound, but it's, again, it's a hard one to yeah. sell. So I, you know, and I think that, uh, obviously like what drew him in is more the strength side and the focus of, of training was really like, you know, where he finds his, his happy place. But I think it would be great and beneficial for him to venture outside of that and really think broader about, you know, how to, how to benefit his body and, and, be motivated by other factors but i th also like yeah power lift it, it will be that that hyper focus on it uh in in polishing and refining the technique will i think at least you know get him to a place where he's like man i'm stoked about my strength again listen i'd be walking around depressed every day if i attached my 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 training success specifically to strength or my aesthetics since i've i believe i've probably reached close to my peak of both of those I think I've seen some of my strongest days ever yeah. of lifting. I also for sure have seen my best physique that I'll probably ever build. And if I still and if I attached my success in the gym today or my progress in the gym today to those metrics that I care so much about for so many years, I would be fucking depressed all mm -hmm. the time. I'm nowhere near my my squat bench dead PRs. I'm nowhere near my my look that I had on stage. And the, the way that I still enjoy lifting and I still keep coming back is that I constantly am reframing my goals and changing why I'm here. Oh, yeah. My purpose is different. If you that's the that's the downfall of getting so fixated on a single metric that you love or you like it with training well, is eventually you will hit the, the the peak of that. It reminds me of when I had to concede to the fact that I'm not I'm not my identity isn't wrapped up in being an athlete anymore. You know, I have to think about this differently. You know, I have to think about it, about what benefits my body, what makes me feel good, what keeps me pain free. Uh, and so that, that has to be a mental shift that you have to be like honest with yourself and just have that conversation of what else can I focus on that's going to keep me going long term. Maybe I'll come back, revisit some of that. Sure. But right now, like I still need to, to think more holistically yeah, about this. I mean, the, the, the dream is to do this forever, right? Till the day you die, to be able to stay mobile and continue to stay active. I don't care how awesome you are. You're not going to be your best when you're, you know, 70, you know, physically or, or <laughs> yeah. performance wise. So what a tough position to be in if that's what you identify with. Like yeah. You're going to be screwed, man. It's not going to work. If you talk to people who've been doing this for a very, very long time, what they've done is they've fallen in love with the process and the result becomes a side effect and they don't identify anymore with the extreme performance and all that stuff. You have to make that decision. You have to make that change and, and that conversion. Otherwise... Like you said, uh, you'll be totally screwed. Yeah, well, we t we tell people the, the, how healthy and good it is to focus on strength, but the truth is, you know, we're being very, I think, very nice and easy on Chris because if this person was somebody who was identifying or comparing their their look, you know, as as their results, and they're just not progressing anymore, and they've already achieved this, the, we would harp on them about how. You gotta you gotta get out of that mindset, and honestly, it's no yeah. different with strength. At one point, you have to move out of that mindset, also. Although we think that's probably one of the healthiest places that most people should put their focus on initially, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have its potential drawbacks too. Totally, yeah. you can you can become wrapped up in, in. I mean, and we see this with our friends who were like professional powerlifters. Mm -hmm. They were powerlifters, and they've been known as like this. Eventually, the body says, "I can't do six hundred pound deadlifts anymore," and you've got to learn to focus on other things. All right, our next caller is Jacob from New York. What up, Jacob? How can we help you? Hey, um, I just want to start out by thanking, saying thank you for uh, taking my call. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, no problem. I have a few questions, so I'll just get right into it. 
Um, I'm 20 years old, about 135 pounds. I'm on the golf team in college and I'm moderately active. I lift about three times a week for about a half an hour for our team lift program. Um, my whole life, I've had pretty bad digestive issues. Um, it's kept me from gaining weight. Um, recently, I've been able to eat a little bit more. Uh, my symptoms have been getting a little bit better. Uh, but when I do, I don't feel as good after when I eat more. Um, but I am physically able to eat more. Um, I just want to really take advantage of this, um, just the time to eat more calories. Um, I just want to build as much muscle as possible. And then I want to cut to where I look bigger because I just haven't had that opportunity. Uh, I'm wondering if you think um, I should take creatine, protein powder. I know your, your guys' stance on creatine and protein powder, um, but I just want a general guide of how I should be maximizing gains right now. Yeah, well, number one, uh, let's talk about your digestive issues. If, if we don't solve that, it's, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. Um, have you Have you gone to see any specialists? Have you been diagnosed with anything? Yeah, so I've seen a lot of gastroenterologists before. Um, we've weighed out a lot of the, I've gotten tested for a lot of things. I actually just sent in my test for SIBO. Um, so I should hear back from that pretty soon. Um, but I've gotten tested for a lot of things and it's taken a long time to fix. So. Okay. Is this your first SIBO test? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So the, I'm sure they already ruled out, um, you know, what's it called? Crohn's disease? Or yeah. Auto okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so SIBO, this is very treatable. So if it comes back and you have SIBO, that literally could be the- It'll change everything. That, I mean, it did for yeah. me. I mean, I, I treated SIBO and it took me a while and it was a couple ways I had to treat it. Mm -hmm. And my gut health mm -hmm. is better now than it's, uh, than it's ever been. So once you get that solved, then eating more food shouldn't be uh, an issue and it'll make okay. a huge difference. Have um, you noticed any, uh, have you, have you noticed uh, any particular foods like, or is it just you, or, are you ever tracked to that point or do you just think every time you over, overeat or eat it, a lot? It's definitely just the volume. Um, I eat a good variety of foods, but um, mostly volume and then just red meats. I definitely can't eat red meat. Um, hmm. But yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, so I hope I hope you get that solved because once you do, that'll make the biggest difference. Supplement wise, mm -hmm. um, yeah, creatine. Creatine's probably one of the best supplements you can take for okay. muscle building, and then uh, you know the kind of workout that you do um, is going to be real important. Now, are you are you trying to stay good at golf, or do you not care now and you just want to get big? No, I definitely still want to be good at golf, um, but I really want to get big and okay. strong. All right. um, so you want both? I, yeah, I think I think I'm practicing enough where if I focus uh, more time on lifting and getting bigger that I could maintain my skills in golf. So depends how much weight you gain, Jacob, yeah. because if, okay. if, if you gain five pounds of muscle um, and you're still practicing golf, you might not notice a difference. You gain 10, 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's going to, it's going to change your, your Those recruitment patterns are going to shift on you. Yeah, just okay. your, just your positioning. Like, just, okay. So like, imagine if you put on like two thick sweaters or three thick sweaters yeah. on your upper body. Now yeah. think of where, you, where your arms are going to position and how that's going to affect your swing. Yeah. So that's kind of what happens. So, um, okay. yeah. So, so be careful because okay. you, you, you'll be trading one for the other yeah. and golf okay. is so technical. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need to tell you that. Right. But you know, one degree <laughs> off and you're, and you you suck. Right. I so mean, yeah. maintaining your swing, uh, throughout this entire process it, like the is vital. I mean, yeah. if that's mm -hmm. a goal of yours is to maintain, you know, any kind of like performance that you've established. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, it is possible to gain and it's just, it's, it, it the focus now you're kind of compromising both right so you got to figure okay. out where that line is for you in terms of like how much you want to gain versus how much golf you still want to maintain you asked about uh, protein powder also um, my recommendation would be uh, obviously to track and see where you're at I, I'm assuming that since you are probably on the lower calorie side you might be missing your protein intake on a regular basis which will also yes okay. so right now I'm kind this is my rough estimate I'm thinking I'm out about at uh, 110 grams protein and then like just under 200 grams of carbs and about 40 grams of fat. Okay. If you're at 110 consistently, that's not that bad at all. But okay. if you hit 110 and that's like a good or high day and then you miss it two or three days in a row, then that's a problem, right? Because you're not, gotcha. you're only 135 pounds, so you don't really need that much more. But okay. I, but I would say 100, 110, 
is about the lowest I want I want you to be. So I would say, okay, uh-huh. let's ne- never let you go lower than that. And then let's use a protein shake if you are ever below a hundred. So if I'm if you're gotcha. below a hundred, I would tell you, all right, Jacob. At the end of the day, add you know add to the protein shake. And the one I would recommend is like a, a vegan protein, like Organifi is probably going to be easier on digestion, or okay. the bone broth one that sells. Yeah, c- collagen peptides or bone broth protein pro- might be might be one. I don't know. That's that's easier for most yeah. people, but. Um, but you'd have to test it out because it can be quite uh, individual. As far okay. as workout is concerned, because you're you want to build muscle and you want to continue your performance in golf, I think Maps Performance would probably be the best because it's the most multiplanar. It's got the most rotation. It's the most dynamic okay. of our programs. Do you have that one? Because we, we can send it no, to you. No, I, I don't have any of them. Okay, we'll send you Maps Performance. That's a great muscle building program, but it's also movement uh, focused and specific, which is going to be good because you have you know two goals, right? You want to be good at golf, but you also want to yeah. put on mass. How much golf are we practicing a week? Um, one we well, I'm in New York right now, so it's still snowing. Um, but in the season, we're playing every day. Okay. okay, so you might you you're going to want to modify the training when you get into season, right? Right now, it's obviously okay because you're not golfing. Yeah. every day but once you get to a place where you're spending an hour to two hours minimum every day golfing i'd probably scale you down to like one time a week of the oh, okay. the, the strength yeah. training so now don't make this mistake jacob don't build a bunch of mass in the in the off season and then go yeah. into the season because that's going to screw up your technique so okay. practice your 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 swings as much as you can even if you just do it in your room but mm-hmm. just just keep your body keep you know stay connected to your body as you yeah. gain size because okay. if you don't it'll be weird you'll go back and you're gonna be all, like a you be like my god I'm so off it's gonna take you a little while to get back and you know back on track yeah okay right. and this is really where a lot of the muscle bound kind of myth stuff happens and it's just because the like a lot of times athletes will build this kind of muscle and won't maintain that skill that they put you okay. know, so much gotcha. effort into so that's just like the biggest concern I have. Yeah, okay. but yeah, I'm looking forward to to, um, to seeing what your results look like with SIBO. Because if that's the case, it's a it's pretty treatable. It's a pretty, okay. you, and you can even okay. treat you can treat it with pharmaceuticals, or you can treat it with herbal antimicrobials. And studies gotcha. show that they're okay. both just as effective. The herbal ones just take a little longer. So uh, okay. if that comes back positive, that's good news because that mm-hmm. that might be the reason why you you you've had so many digestive issues. Okay. All right, man. Okay. Well, thanks for calling um, in. Does that help? Wait, or? Quick quick question, sure. if you don't mind. Um, for the creatine, how like how much do you think I should be taking, and like on what schedule do you think? Five grams a day in the morning is just fine, or, or right after okay. your workout. Yeah, just once a day, five grams. Yeah, timing. Okay. T- okay. They, they say post workout is the best, but it, we're talking about splitting hairs here. It's more important for you to be consistent with it. So consistently okay. take five grams a day. You're going to be solid. Okay, awesome. Well, cool. thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Really appreciate it. No problem, Jacob. Right, Good luck, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's another one of those. Uh, I want to be really good at golf and yeah. I want to you know, or build a lot of muscle. But the digestive stuff, stuff, I, I know because uh, when my gut you is figure off. figure that out, it's game changer. Bro, when my gut is off, forget it. It's, I just can't fuel my body enough to, to gain any size. It's just, no matter, it doesn't matter how great my workout is, it doesn't matter what, anything else. Well, that has to get solved first. Even that too, like it's it's something you got to constantly you know keep in mind because like even if you do find the answer to it, you got to be consistent with that. Yes. Were we, were we having this discussion on the podcast? Did we answer another golf question just recently, or was that off air? Recently, we did. Were we off air? Or were no, we, we were on. Oh, we were on air yeah, talking. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like we were, remember we were talking about like of all the sports. Yeah. This, this is the one that has the least amount of like forgiveness for gaining, totally. gaining. Like strength doesn't necessarily apply to like uh, you yeah know, improving it's such a technical swings. sport. Yeah, we were saying how like you know you could be a football lineman and put an extra five or ten pounds. Of, yeah, but twenty pounds on, you're fine. Yeah, easily. yeah, and not be not be that big of a deal. But you were like a, a pitcher, a golfer, something that is like. The, the slightest bit of a, a difference makes all <laughs> the difference in the, the ball, how it yep. moves. Is So golf is a tough one, man. I, I, I normally, if I had golfers, uh, we really would not be trying to change their weight and physique much. I could change their body composition a little bit. We could lose a little bit of body mm-hmm. fat, add a little bit of muscle. Yeah. But I generally right. like to keep their weight about the same where they're at. You know, sure. I just want to keep them loose, mobile, and yeah. like their joints like completely bulletproofed. Yep. Yeah. Our next caller is Garrett from California. What's up, Garrett? How can we help you? Hey, thanks for taking my call, guys. Um, So I'll I'll just jump right in. Um, 
Uh, so I am, I have two big athletic events that I like to train for every year. Um, I've been a ski instructor for 20 years. Uh, over the, the Christmas, New Year time frame, I end up teaching uh, for most of the, those two weeks, so about 10 days or so. And then I kind of ski recreational the, the, the rest of the winter. Uh, so I know that the general advice is to do your sport. Um, but that's not really possible with this in this case, because typically the mountain opens up like, you know, a few days or maybe a week in advance. So I, if I'm lucky, I get one day in before I'm just, you know, thrown right into, you know, teach skiing every day. And I, I end up teaching you know, whoever shows up. So it could be anything from like beginners to, you know, advanced mogul lessons. Uh, the other thing that I like to train for um, is during the summer uh, around the end of July, uh, I like to train up for uh, a long run. Uh, this year, I think I might end up trying to do a 50K, 30-mile uh, run. Uh, last year, it was a marathon. Um, so I, I'm not trying to lose weight or anything. I just I, I like doing it. I like going for these long trail runs. And then I do like to do a little bit of rock climbing uh, kind of throughout the year. Uh, I don't really like train for it or anything, though. That's mostly just... Um, a way for my wife and I to, you know, hang out, spend some time together and everything. So the, the two events, the, the skiing, the big ski push, and then the big run, they're roughly about six months apart. And I, I want to try and figure out like, what is the best way to, to phase my, my training uh, for those events? I'd like to do, uh, you know, weightlifting to support uh, those athletic uh, endeavors and you know prevent injury uh improve my performance and um improve durability i guess i think that's sort of the 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 summary there uh, i'm not really trying to gain muscle or gain size i should say and i'm not trying to lose weight oh garrett we we, we made a program yeah. for someone just like uh, you maps performance <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah 100%. That's, that's maps performance all day long cool. yeah you want a well-rounded routine that's going to give you strength and mobility it's going to train you different planes of motion you want to you want something that's going to you know just like you listed i mean you literally said exactly what you want and that's exactly what you'd get from a program like mass performs the other program that might help would be like maps ocr because of the climbing mm. that you do um it, and so essentially you're you're looking at you might do some days where you're doing traditional strength training but a lot of it's going to be multiplanar type movement you're going to focus heavily on mobility um, I like the sled a lot for someone like you. It's great lower body yeah. exercise. Very, very, there's a lot of carryover from the sled to, you know, all the other stuff that you're doing. And then as far as rock climbing is concerned, you know, lots of pulling movements, obviously pull-ups uh, are going to be really good for you. I'm sure yeah. you already know that. Um, but the idea is just to have this kind of well-rounded workout routine and your goal should feel, you should feel good after your workouts. I want you to always yeah. feel good after your workouts and feel mobile. And mobility is going to be the main focus. MAPS performance by far. And if you don't have that, we'll send that to you. But by far, that's the best program uh, for someone like you. MAPS OCR would be the other one that I would say. It's a little more okay. specific, but that would be the other one that well, I would it's say. It's grip, grip intensive. And so I think that's Got a good it. suggestion from the OCR. But yeah. I mean, yeah. I, 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 so I, I typically, I, I lift weights like twice a week or so. I've been kind of doing like a like a modified 531 sort of program. Um so, you know, that would, that would be awesome to, to get performance. Um, during, uh, like as the, you know, as I ramp up in with the running and everything, mm -hmm. I'm assuming like I, I probably need to cut back on that. So how yes. typically, how would you do that sort of thing? So maps performance is three workouts in the gym and then you do mobility sessions on the off days, which you could do at home. Okay. When you're doing the, when you're in season, one day a week of resistance okay. training is plenty, and I don't I don't focus on going hard with the weights. The goal should be to maintain mobility. So yeah, when you're in season, if I'm training an athlete in season, my goal is to keep them limber, loose, and and to feel good. I'm not trying to get them to progress in weight uh, or progress in performance in the gym because if I do that, I'm I'm in increasing the risk of injury. So well, and it's mainly about you know stabilization and strengthening and supporting around the joints. So I don't want to you know, mislead you and think that we're just trying to keep you loose. It's really just about sure. keeping the joints functioning and strong and, yeah. and uh, you know, efficient. And so the, it, the program itself is really about maximizing your movement uh, patterns and really like strengthening those movement patterns. So, you know, you go through the phase, the first phase is really like intensive in terms of, uh, you know, strength training focus. And then you get into more like multiplanar movement and then you get into some speed power. And then we finally kind of come to the, 
to the point where we're working on endurance and durability, like you had mentioned. So uh, okay, it's cool. all phased in there specifically. So that way your body can just focus on like one of those attributes at a time. Garrett, do you, it, um, Oh, go yeah. ahead, go ahead and get a question. Oh, I was just going to say like, so the, the running, you know, the, uh, the ramp up for, uh, running, it's not a race. I'm, I just go out and run. Um, you know, but that's, that's going to start basically in March. So would you consider that the season, like March through July, or would you kind of, you know, maybe come back like two months or something? Like yeah. how, how? So, how, so for every day of running, I would cut back a day of, of, of resistance training. So if you're doing three days a week of resistance training with mass performance, and then you're like, oh, I want to start running now, you know, two days a week or three days a week, then you're doing maybe one day a week of okay. resistance training right. and reducing the intensity. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, Garrett. Do you uh, do you follow Kelly Starrett? Do you know who that is? I yeah, you know I I don't follow him. Um, I I checked out his book once from the library, but I didn't get very far into it. Okay, yeah, it's pretty heavy. So it's pretty yeah. yeah it's for <laughs> unless you're like a personal trainer, it's a little heavy. But he's got great content. He literally I I just so it's funny we're having this conversation right now uh, because I saved a a video post he did yesterday, and I just got on his page. It's four videos back. His Instagram handle is called The Ready State, the Ready State yeah. and it was okay. a uh, mo a little five minute mobility session for skiing. Um, oh, really? Yeah, okay. and it, I I saved it personally because he and in he includes a few movements that I don't currently do, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm so gonna do this before I ride. Um, and and Maps Performance has uh, mobility days in there, and we always encourage people to. It, we we they're, yeah. it's general, so Modified. it'll it'll help you, but. Here's a perfect example how if you were a client of mine, I would take that Kelly Starrett mo mobility like pre-ski thing. And when you're in kind of ski season, like that becomes your mobility days because okay. that's kind of your focus. At, like we care about the most and protecting you for that. Uh, that would be mostly what I would do on those mobility days would be the movements that he's teaching on that on that clip. So it's like four posts to go. He says it's a, it's a five minute warm up. You can see it on his Instagram page. Um, I literally just saved it yesterday for myself cool. personally because it's so good. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, you can definitely check out Instagram. That that sounds awesome. Cool. Uh, thanks. Awesome. Um, yeah, if you guys end up coming up uh, to go skiing or anything, let me know. It'd be it'd be great to. Bro, that's we're, like, we're up gonna up hit or, you up. Yeah, yeah, we're up there actually all next week. In fact, if you're really serious, I would love for you to yeah. e email back the email just your personal information i don't want you to put it on air put you out there yeah, to sure. everybody. <laughs> but if you email us your 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 personal information and contact info uh i know that uh, justin has already multiple times hired uh guys to, to mm -hmm. teach his kids yep. ski lessons so i'm sure he'll we'll take advantage of that i've never gone oh, cool. skiing, and i've never yeah. skied in my entire life here so, <laughs> so he yeah. needs all the help so we're, 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 we're gonna sh start shaming you yeah. man. come on <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I've been doing this for a long, long time. If you ever want to ski sell, I'd be happy to, to help you out. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Cool, yep. man. All, All right, right, Garrett. Thanks. See you guys. Take it no easy. Talk about a, a, a really, um, I guess, healthy approach to activity. Oh, what a... I, I know. When he first was kind of listing everything off, I'm like, dude, just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. great, great. I mean, he's doing rock climbing to connect better with his wife because they do that together. I think that's so yeah, cool. Yeah, the reasoning was great. Goes on a phase where he is running for a while, mm -hmm. but then he switches to... I mean, this is like... I love when I hear stuff like this because where he's kind of at is a place I'm, I'm, I'm trying to encourage all my clients to kind of go towards, you know, like yeah, when and I, not specifically yeah, what yeah, he's doing, no, no, exactly. the enjoyment aspect. Yes. Find the fun in it. Yes. Yeah. yes. And, 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 you know, we, we so many times we get, uh, you know, uh, heat because people think that we're so anti running, but here's such a great relationship with running, right? He doesn't, he's not getting crazy competitive. He likes doing it. He goes through a little phase of it every single year that has tremendous value yep. for health wise, but he's not crazy addicted to it. He can move out of it and get into rock climbing and do, I mean, I just, such a cool place, very yes. healthy place to be uh, when it comes to exercise and, and training. For and sure. ma mass performance, like uh, oh, yeah. such the perfect program. So made for him. Yeah. Yep. Our next caller is Sam from Texas. Sam, what's happening? How can we help you? Hi. Uh, hey, guys. So my question uh, was just short and sweet. I, I've uh, kind of fallen off my, my training, so I'm curious as to what I can do to get my metabolism right. I, I'm not hungry for breakfast at all. Uh, sometimes I struggle to eat dinner on the same day. Um, so I was just wanting for some tips and tricks on, uh, around protein consumption on how to get my metabolism back up. Yeah. Uh, what does your training look like? Is it uh, so I just came off a marathon 
half a marathon training. So I'm, I'm starting at ground zero. That's so why. Yeah, that's exactly going, get, why. Getting back into weightlifting, hopefully three days, four days a week. Yeah. That'll, that'll mm-hmm. get your appetite going. Oh, yeah. You send the signal to build muscle. Yeah. I'm going to say, do you have maps anabolic? Uh, no. All right. Let, let, I'm going to send that to you. I think that's the program you should do. Do, do two months of pre-phase and then move into phase one. Okay. Once you send a good muscle building signal, your appetite should go up. It's, it's, it's there's no, um, I, I, it's no mystery why your appetite is gone after the marathon. Things have really shut down. Your body's become more efficient. You probably lost a little muscle. So MAPS Anabolic is going to get things moving again and get the appetite up. <clears throat> now from there, in terms of protein, um, you know, you, I'm sure you've heard you want to aim for about a gram of protein per pound of body weight. But that's really tough when your appetite <clears throat> is low. So this is where I recommend people eat hyper palatable uh, foods. So try to pick protein sources that you enjoy eating for now, but also listen to your body. Okay. So as your body starts to build muscle, you should see an increase in your appetite. Protein shakes can help a little bit with this because they're easy to to consume. They don't require as much appetite, right? So you can have a protein shake in between meals and that'll get things moving up uh, in the right direction. How, how much do you weigh right now? <clears throat> About, I'd say 163. Okay. Well, relatively lean. Uh, see, that's the thing is I, I did an in body. I, I've heard you guys talk about those before. So I don't know what your thoughts are, but I was sitting around 15%. So, uh, could be better. Okay. Yeah. It could be better, but not bad. It's not either. bad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it could be better, but you're not bad. And I, Sal's advice is perfect then. I mean, literally get started with that. Let the, let the training drive the appetite, not the appetite drive the training. Right. So once you get started on the program, it'll kick up the appetite naturally. Don't, don't worry about trying to force feed yourself now. Um, and then when you do start to add calories, make sure you're targeting protein. So normally with someone like you, that's the main where I'm starting you on a MAPS anabolic program. The conversation is all around, hey, as you get hungrier, let's try and get more more protein in the diet. And so we're I'm you know pushing you in that direction to get more meats primarily to get you up to your your grams of protein you need. If we need to, um, I, I might have you have a shake. Uh, to do that because it's uh, easy to digest and it doesn't feel very heavy. So if I find you're landing like around 100 grams of protein and I want you up at least another 20, 30, 40 grams of protein and we're having a hard time getting there, I might have you add a shake uh, to do that because mm. it's a little bit easier than you know sitting down and having a you know eight ounce steak. So that might be a strategy that we use, although I'm always going to push you in the direction of trying to do it through Whole Foods yeah. first. Sam, did you do any resistance training or strength training before the, before the marathon? Do you have any experience with it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and some real quick context, guys. So last summer, I prepped for a bodybuilding show. That was part of the reason behind the question is I did not reverse diet at all. Wow. Uh, the, the show wow. fell through. Wow. Uh, it was in, in July. and it, Granted, it's been like six months, but that was part of the, the question for you guys was like, yeah, am I still feeling like the backlog from that? Bro, yeah. plus training for I didn't take my Yeah, the the one two punch. <laughs> right plus there. you trained for the marathon right afterwards. That yeah. that was a that was like you added you had you had a fire going on and you just threw some gasoline on it. Um it's a slow process. Okay, so now that you added that context like I'm going to focus on sleep, rest, mm, restorative. Yeah, restorative. Methods. Maps anabolic is perfect. Prephase is perfect for the first couple months. Then you can move into phase one and so on and just slowly take your time and slowly move your calories up. You may not even see the scale go up for a little while, but you may notice a change in body composition. So you may gain a little muscle, lose a little body fat, and then eventually the scale will start to move up in the right direction. But take your time uh, with that. You know, out of curiosity, what made you go from bodybuilding to marathon? So very different things. Uh, well, so the bodybuilding thing, I, I got a job last second in Austin, Texas. I was going to do an NBC show in St. Louis. I had to make a decision. So the marathon was kind of like a, uh, and, I, and I only did a half for starters. So before you guys gassed me up, um, it was really, <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of wanted to finish something. I didn't have the energy to jump into another prep, um, but I kind of had a chip on my shoulder because I, I made it through 16 weeks and then didn't. So I was like, I got to do something. Um, I, I like fitness. So, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to change, but my, my heart and soul is in lifting. And this is in my life, like for eight years of lifting, like I'm not hungry. My strength is down. I'm inconsistent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, give, give it some time. You might even be have, having a little bit of low testosterone right now from all of that. So give it some time. I'd say it, it might take you as much as three or four months before you really start to see some big changes. So funny, when you first prescribed him to do MAPS pre-phase for like two months, I was actually going to interrupt and be like, God, that's kind of overkill, bro. But now that I hear <laughs> where he's coming from, it's actually perfect. That's yeah. Just, I, I, and, that, and that's going to, by the way, the challenge you're going to probably have is the it sounds like you're a competitive person, mm-hmm. um, and so you're gonna want to do more probably too soon. So just keep that in mind. 
uh, that as you, as you start to get better, as the appetite does start to come back a little bit and you start feeling good, that could potentially happen in a couple weeks and you feel it right away. And I'd still listen to Sal's advice of sticking to the pre-phase for a solid you know, two months or so before I move you into phase one of anabolic. I just think that it, it, you would yeah. do yourself a favor. And by once you get to phase one, then things will really start to kick in, kick into gear. Awesome. All right, man. Right Th- thanks for calling in, Sam. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I'll give you some updates in a couple months, hopefully. Awesome. Right thanks, Appreciate brother. that. Ooh, that's rough. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pre-contest prep. I know. I'm trying to wrap my brain Marathon, around that. Half marathon. Whoa. That well, is a shock brutal. to the system. Well, especially metabolically, right? That's I mean, exactly I mean, what I'm talking you, about. Uh, uh, prep dieting is one of the most extreme, obviously, the extre- one of the most extreme ways to diet, right, is to be cutting – and, and and pushing the body for the extended period. Oh, that of time. hammers your metabolism, right? That already it's like, hammers it's like the walking dead. And then you direction. then you transition right into a, a, a half marathon, uh, and then teaching the body like you you need all this cardiovascular output. So the body is just going like, oh shit, we may not get fed ever again. We're gonna have to conserve. You gotta hold slow, on to everything. Yeah, slow way down and. So yeah, I mean this is a, a, a classic example. You know, it's he's an extreme version. But we talked about this the other day on the podcast. Is you know a lot of people are fall somewhere on the spectrum when they don't realize that 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 you're, they're working against their body. And if they would just mm-hmm. try and work with it instead of against it, it would, yeah. it would make things a lot easier. You know, I, if he's listening to this, I uh, go to mphormones.com and and schedule an appointment with one of their specialists and get your hormones tested too, because mm-hmm. uh, you probably hammered your testosterone levels uh, as well. And uh, although you might not need to go on TRT because uh, they may be able to at least monitor and recommend other things that help that move up because loss of appetite uh, goes along, you know, kind of hand in hand with that. So, hey, look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find us all on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And I'm on Twitter at mindpumpsal.com. 